Dear Starry, I'm going to approach this video as though I have you right here in front of me. I know I talked to you today a long time, but, you know, the distance is always a situation. So, I tried to find a quiet spot on the farm, and without the children and the wind chimes and the cat who could still appear, and just talk to you for a few minutes. I've kind of been quiet. Um... I just felt it in my heart to sort of step back and, um, you know, let God show me when was the appropriate time to, you know, send you a message. And today was really an emotional day talking to you, you know, person to person. And uh, just want to let you know that you are making a huge impact on so many people's lives. I'm not sure you know that. I think you have a sense about it. Um, but, you know, you're really making a huge impact on people. Here's why we love Starry Hilder. We're not in awe completely of Starry Hilder because of great skill sets, gorgeous biceps, oh my gosh, uh, tenacity, a little bit of quirkiness. A hunky Mr. Hilder up by her side. We love Starry, and I'm saying we because there's no way I'm only speaking about myself. We love Starry because Starry has guts. Starry has guts today that most people don't. And that is, she is willing to put her heart and her beliefs and herself out on the farthest limb hanging. And it doesn't matter how hard the wind blows, she's still there. That's why you're growing. That's why people are following you. And that's why you have been blessed. When I got the news and was reading about your incident, I have to honestly tell you you know, you hear and read about things that happen in the world and things that happen to people and a lot of, you know, you're just like, you know, you, you get down about it. I have to tell you that I had an entire emotional experience with finding out about your accident. And let me tell you why. I'm only talking to you. I know other people are seeing this, so, but I'm just treating you here. A year and a half ago, just in brief, I was injured in my barn. And um, I was smashed in the face by a cow. Broke my nose, uh, concussion watch. Um, basically, as the doctors said, it was a miracle that I was not knocked out and trampled on. Those experiences are one thing. What I noticed about myself was the men mental game that it played with me after. It was the debate of, am I going to have to have surgery? It was the debate of, am I going to keep my teeth? Um, is something going to shift? I already have a large fracture in my face um, that has to be watched from Krav Maga training. I got hit in the face a couple years ago with a dummy gun. And so when you have some type of impact, anything with a head injury, head, face, and neck, that is, that's some serious stuff. We know this, you know, everybody knows this, you know this. But what I noticed about myself was the mental game that it played with me after. It's just like when folks, and, and uh, most of people don't understand, when people get in a car wreck, or if you have, say, a wounded warrior, the idea that you may not be the same, or you may not be able to do what you did before. You may not be able to provide the same way you did before. All of these fears come forth. So that's what where my mind went when I read about your injury. Yours is pretty significant. I think we all will agree on that. And you know. But I want to tell you that. I purposely waited 
to do anything because I said, God, there's going to be an outpour of love. I was just told to wait. And today I got on Facebook and I was scrolling through and there's the pictures of you with all your outpour from your supporters. And you clearly are going through an emotional journey with this. Okay? It's very obvious. You have not you are not on a journey. You are on a mission. We all don't know the mission per se. You may not even know the mission. But I can definitely tell that you are being tested and blessed as a testimony to others and that's why we love Starry. Being on YouTube um, is a very vulnerable place. Writing, you're behind the screen. But when you put yourself in front of the camera and you have these expectations of yourself and you start to have these expectations of yourself because of others and then you feel like you aren't, may or may not be able to do, that starts to play mental, mental games with you. But today I sat at my computer and I saw the pictures of you and I, I said, this is exactly what I knew. You are absolutely going to come back from this. Not only are you going to come back from it, but man, the comeback story is going to just be killer. I saw, I see this today. I, I see it and I see it in, in you and in your conviction. Okay. And you're just going through a journey, but yet you're on a mission. Let me tell you something else. I'm not going to cry. I'm not telling you. I'm going to tell myself. I'm not going to cry. Let me tell you a story. Because a lot of people doubt miracles. And it amazes me because I see, you see, I see miracles every day. You, living on a farm, looking at the Tennessee Valley, just seeing kindness in people from time to time and just different things. Um, there are miracles every day around us. Let me tell you a little story. A long time ago, there was a teenage girl, beauty queen, and there was the star quarterback of the football team. And they were dating, and they were normal teenage children. <laughs> and long story short, they became pregnant. They decided to put off school, going to college, playing baseball at a university on scholarship, and doing all the things that everyone else was doing to not only keep the baby, have the baby, but to get married. So at a very young age, unlike everybody they knew, and shamed in a sense in their community, not shamed, but embarrassed maybe they decided to build a life so they did they had the baby and when the baby was 11 months old the baby became very sick one day extremely high fever and they didn't know what was wrong because they were getting blown off in a sense by the doctors By the morning, the baby was unresponsive. So, they rushed to the doctor. When they got to the doctor's office and they started running all types of tests on the child, the child was going into a coma at the time, unresponsive. 
and they rushed the child to Children's Hospital in Knoxville, Tennessee. They were told that their child had bacterial spinal meningitis. And that if the child even lived through the night, was not expected to even live, that if it survived, it would become or would be deaf, blind, or have brain damage. So an entire community came together praying and doing over this one little baby. There was no insurance at the time. So you're dealing with a dying baby, no insurance. Teenagers with little odds to begin with, right? The next day, the child woke up. And I'm told, grabbed the finger of her pepo. Eleven days later, she was released from the hospital and a month later started walking, fully recovered. They basically brought the child back from death. The child was virtually dead, dying. I am that baby. Now, I have no memory of this, obviously. But I can tell you, if you speak to my mother, my dad, my grandmother, they will tell you with a very firm tone and full confidence, they will tell you that miracles happen because they saw it firsthand. And they watched a community of friends and family and church come together and pray together and provide so much that not only was the child lifted in prayer, but all the medical bills were met. So don't let anybody tell you that miracles don't happen and that you can't overcome because we know you will. I don't talk about this ever because I have no memory, but I have seen what it did to my mother. You can watch the transformation in their conversation when this subject is even brought up. There's no denying that miracles happen every day. And there's no denying that the message that you speak very confidently on your channel is being heard by many people that need to hear it. Many people who look to you for the confidence that they need in their own lives and their own faith. And they're going to continue to look to you in your triumph because it's coming. There's no doubt about it. I hope this finds you well and resting. I told you 10 times today <laughs> to not worry about all of us, okay? Worry about you and rest. We're all gonna be here. You don't need to worry about us. And when you return, we're all gonna be standing and cheering you on. We love you. I hope this blesses you half as much as it's blessed me and your message and your shout out to me and your friendship. So you know where I'm at. You know how to contact me. We'll do what we need to do. You just rest and we'll see you on the other side. And that's going to be your mission. Take care.